Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, in entering this golden age, better known as the corona period. When a baby is being born, it is known as a crowning, and the Latin word for crown is corona. This new birthing has made each one of you on a global scale an economic sovereign. You are responsible for everything in your life now, your money, your health, and anything else you can think of. You are responsible for it. Your governments and your states will be rolling back the nanny state, leaving you in power with controlling your own lives. Grasp this moment in time. I have not witnessed it in my lifetime, and I do not think your great, 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 great grandfathers have witnessed this period. If you lack the knowledge and the understanding of what I am talking about, you will see descriptions of it in the description box to be able to educate you and enlighten you to get yourself into this new corona period. The last thing that you need is the old way of life rolling under this brand new corona period, this golden age. Like, for example, the old mechanisms of mortgages and debt. And what does a mortgage mean? It means a death pledge. And if you want that death pledge to follow you in to this brand new world, you cannot be a sovereign because a sovereign cannot have a death pledge in their lives. The multitude of people that are out there, I have created mechanisms, court systems, throughout 195 countries in the world to be able to remove these old contracts, these old pledges out of your lives. All you have to do is launch that complaint with me. The birthing of our new economic instruments are being rolled out all over the world. You will know that as cryptocurrency, which means the middleman which we have come to rely upon so much is going to be removed, null and void. The peer-to-peer -peer transactions that is going to take place will make each one of you a bank and a banker. Therefore, you don't need the high street banks. You don't need, for example, the Huber car operators who act as a hub. That's one example. You can just simply choose on that peer-to-peer -peer transaction all the drivers that are available to you. Just as you don't need Amazon anymore because you can contact the distributors, the manufacturers and buy off them directly and pay them directly. The middleman will not be able to take is unearned currencies, your own commercial energy, your sweat equity away from you. Without that, you are much, much more richer. We have a great deal of things to thank for the people that created these systems for us, for the benefit of mankind, so we can become educationally strong, so we can become commercially active and productive. For that, for that, I thank those people, better known as the Bitcoin, better known as the creators of the blockchain and the cryptocurrencies, for that. Thank you. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the old sphere of knowledge, the old sphere of going about doing things, will want its own conservative life. It will want to fight the new way of life because human beings are pattern seeking and they prefer security and to know the things that they have known to go on and on. As they say, it is better to deal with the devil that you know than the devil that you do not know. Let me make it very clear in this golden age, in this wonderful era, the last thing you want to do is deal with the devil, whether that is unknown or known. The peer-to-peer -peer 
transactions will level the playing field in all manner of ways. The devil, ladies and gentlemen, is the middleman. By default, it has just simply vanished from your lives. As you have been birthed into this Earth's history, a new constitution will follow you, and they're known as the Georgia Guidestones. Like most instruments and constitutions, you have to read from the bottom to the top. Please do not read from the top to bottom. All authorization follows the bottom to top. And I will read out these things and what they mean in detail. The Tenth Constitution is, be not a cancer on this planet. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. What that means, in this brief period of three months, you have seen that the oceans, the atmosphere, have rejuvenated. You have seen the skies crystal clear, clearer than you have ever seen it. And then all it took is three months for that to happen. The earth is a powerful healing mechanism, not just for you, but itself as well. They are making it very clear. And I'm sorry to use the word they. I will reveal who they are at a later stage. As for the Olympians, whom I've named by name, are no more. They have no standing on this planet. I need to repeat myself again. Be not a cancer on this planet. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Prize truth, beauty and love. Be in harmony with these things. It's very simple. Beauty has a life of its own. We call it creative energy. Another word for truth is a fact. You have to praise it. You have to prize it. Without it, you will be deaf, dumb and blind in this new era. Balance personal rights with social duties. Your personal rights you already know as a sovereign. You know the old law that still stands true and supreme which is do no harm to others. Well, what are your social duties? Your social duties are even more simpler and you've been doing them all your life. That's when you look out for your neighbour. That is when you look out for the earth and you've been doing that all your lives. Unfortunately, one or two individuals, usually within a country or even a group of people within a country, cause most of the ill effects on ourselves as well as on the earth. They can be just simply purged because they have been using all manner of twisted words to get you to believe that the earth is warming up and the earth is cooling down and therefore they will step in and cause the earth to be climate controlled. Like, for example, the climate control in your car. All this nonsense words are going to be just simply purged from their lips. So it has no meaning. The social contracts are very clear. Giving first aid, doing no harm to others already puts you in that wonderful position. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Well, the useless officials is what I'm talking about when I said the nanny state will be rolled back. Your governments, corporations, will become service providers, essential service providers, making sure that when you instruct them, and the word is instruct, to do a particular task that they get on with it. If they don't, they are no longer fit for purpose. And if they are not, they are considered useless. You know what petty laws are. That is so many of the litigations that have been taking place where human beings cannot communicate so they take themselves into court and where the courts reap you of so much money because you cannot come together and agree upon something. 
The fictitious courts, albeit the fiction courts, are a middleman. Just because you can't communicate with each other doesn't mean you have to go running to a middleman. Knock on your neighbor's door, say what you need to say in a polite and a cordial fashion. You'll win over. Of course you will. Let all nations rule internally. But of course, that makes sense, does it not? And if you have an external dispute, let that be in a world court. That's speaking to me. I have the power internally as well as on a global scale. If it came through the letterbox, if it's on paper, I have jurisdiction. And because the postal service was involved, I have to step in as a chief federal postal court judge to make sure those grievances I heard publicly on a geometric level playing field protect people with fair laws and just courts. Well, we have fair laws because our language system created by David Wayne Miller is a language you cannot trespass on because you can't lie in it. It is mathematically certified. It's also self-correcting. As for the courts, the court systems, well, my court systems are the only factual courts on the planet and they take jurisdiction over any courts that refuses to give closure, especially when it deals with the language, because I control the languages. Grammar controls all contracts. All contracts control all commercial activity. Rule passion, faith and tradition. Well, tradition, if somebody has already done it, all you have to do is follow in their paths and make it better, make it work better. Faith, ladies and gentlemen, is what links us. My faith in you, your faith in me, our faith in our ability to do business together. This is why the world of religion and faith is as about as far removed as a vacuum is to something that is filled with knowledge and life. Religion means no people because RE means no, as in a receding airline. And Legion, as in Julia Caesar's legions. That makes sense, does it not? We can move forward with that, can't we? The passion is a wonderful carrier. I am usually filled with passion. This is how I manage to do the things that I do. It is the passion for it. And that passion rules supreme. And it helps me with faith and the rest of it. As for temperance, do things with temperance, which means use logic, use kindness, use any mechanisms that you can to stop yourself from going to war with each other. Who needs conflict when the middleman is no longer there? Unite humanity with one language. Well, thanks to David Wayne Miller, who created that one language, quantum grammar. We have that one language in every country in the world. We have one flag, which is a grammar flag that you see before you, behind me, that controls the grammar and the language for all of those nations, for all of those countries, for all of those people that can easily get lost in the words. Well, we have a wonderful language system and my court systems use that language. And that was a gift to humanity by David Wayne Miller. Guide reproduction wisely. Improve fitness and diversity. Well, diversity is something to be liked. What we call psychological types or what David Wayne Miller in his wisdom said, the many species of men and women, psychological types. As for your fitness, well, there are plans being rolled over to increase those people's lifespans that do not lie, cheat, use fictitious language. Their lifespans will reach well over a hundred years. That's being championed by the Chinese 
as well as the Russians. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, longevity to well over a hundred years in fitness and in health is there. It has been there for centuries. Well, all of those lost ways, those traditions are coming back. Maintain humanity to 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. As shocking as that statement can be, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. You are not aware that one single person that knows how the system and the bureaucracies work can create multiple names of themselves, what we used to commonly call pen names, fiction names, and in radios they used to be called handles. What that means is someone like your president or a billionaire or a multimillionaire or one of the politicians or one of the religious leaders can be doing business as DBA as up to two, three hundred, four hundred, fifty, sixty thousand different names. Sucking resources, burning up fuel. That's essentially one person replicating themselves anything up to sixty thousand times. You are seeing these things as I am speaking. Imagine those people that have caused so many ill effects on this planet can no longer have access to doing business as 10,000 other people. Having 10,000 homes. If you want to know about the consequences, just think about this. Imagine one person that is operating under 10,000 names and they are drawing in the medical supplies of 10,000 people. And they are drawing in the social services of 10,000 people. And that they are getting grants and loans and all of these numbers as 10,000 people. What do you think that adds up to? That is what the Georgia Guidestones is essentially talking about. It is the end of those fictitious pen names, those handles in which so many of these ill-doers, so many of these ill effects on our planet hide behind. Everything that I'm speaking about here and much, much more will be detailed in my book that will be released this year. As well as being an autobiography, it will also detail how the law works and how the grammar works so you folks out there don't feel powerless. So you are able to grasp this technology just like with the cryptocurrencies. And in that book I'll also be sharing with you the wonderful people that I have come across, like my judges, and I want to share with you all the magnificent things that they have done and all the journeys that they've gone through. It's not just about the celebration of myself, which you should celebrate yourself. Always celebrate your achievements. Do not be shy to shout out about it, otherwise the world will not know what it is that you have done. So I will be shouting out about them as well. And I am so very proud that I have met so many wonderful men and women. Within the backdrop of that, I will also be speaking about some of the case studies, those people that are so toxic, so negative, that they leave a very bad impression on the rest of us, as well as in, in your individual lives. You know the kind of damage a corporation can do to a nation, as well as the individuals that belong in that nation. But those individuals that attack you individually, well, they're usually gone under the radar. And I'll be talking about them as case studies. And because they're in the public domain, the level of insights that will be talked about I'm hoping will be staggering, if not a contribution to psychology itself. In nature, what you have is what is known as negative reinforcement or negative forcement. 
And there is a reason for that. It's because the toxic people, the people that cause damage, as well as the organizations, can have a profound effect on you as well as the rest of your lives. Say a good-hearted person is doing good-hearted things to you. You don't need to be wary of these people because they are your friend and therefore your own psychology doesn't create an impression great enough that you celebrate their wonderful life that you've been having with them, that you are enriched by having them in your lives. But in fact, what happens, it reinforces, your own mind reinforces the toxic people that have come into your life because a toxic person can quite literally take your life and as a life precaution, as a precaution to preservation of your life, the negative reinforcement stays strong in one's mind. So take for example one of the case studies I'll be using and these names of course in the backdrop of the grand scale of what I'm talking about with the language and the court system is nobody. They are nobodies, that's why they do what they do. Take one individual for example called Raven. He uses Miller's technology to twist and turn it. I will give you an example. In Miller's technology we always speak from first-hand knowledge. So we say, for my knowledge, which means you're not slandering somebody. What he does, goes around telling people, no, it's not knowledge, it's sensation, for your sensation. As comical as it is, luckily I caught it in advance. Luckily I caught it before it took root like a cancer and I cut it out. The consequences of this is what we call the colouring of the law. When somebody takes a copyrighted material and alters that, by altering it, you've now moved out of the copyright. And you convince enough people that it's sensation rather than knowledge. Well, you can get away with it, but not under my watch. One of the best examples I've ever heard of the colouring of law is in George Orwell's Animal Farm. And after the animals had won their battle with the farmer, they all got together and wrote out a constitution. And that constitution is a celebration that all animals are equal. And then of course, as time passes by and the toxic individuals get selfish, get brave, then they make an amendment and that amendment says all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others. That's one of the best examples of colouring of the law. It is the colouring of the law that robs you of your ability to make your claims, to keep your patents, your inventions as yours, as originally as they were. In studying such subspecies, I uncovered a lot of mechanisms, mechanisms that, that are very rarely ever spoken about by psychologists. I found out he made friends with a particular student of mine whom I sponsored, whom I trained, whom I set up in business in, Jason Matthew Glass. And in doing so, he used a client, not to experiment upon themselves, but use somebody else. And in doing so, cost him 1.2 million euros. This type of behavior and conduct in this brand new era is intolerable. The easiest way to confront any one of these things in your own life is just simply ask them. Hey, is this true? And watch the magnitude of lies that come out of their mouth. What I'm saying to you is that the old way of life kept people in prison of presumption and assumption of tricksters tricking themselves into your lives. 
To keep yourself safe, ask those simple questions. Who are you? What have you done? Show us the proof. So on and so forth. What I have found out is most of these individuals have little or no employment and they move from one victim to another. Do not be concerned that they infiltrate. It's because they use trust and trust is a binding mechanism that allow human beings to move forward in life. But certain individuals would twist and turn. Some of the other names are even more fascinating to me. One of them is when I used to be a counsellor for drug addictions, we used to come across a particular individual called an enabler. This enabler, what it would do is empower this subspecies. They're commonly known as narcissists, but narcissism is only one of the mechanisms that the diagnosed condition of psychopathy is. The psychopathy relies upon people to bring victims to it, as well as to support it on its journey. And these enablers are seldomly ever spoken about until I came across one in my own training program called Rosemary. And when I discovered the mechanism, I almost slapped my head silly, realizing, really, is it that simple? Yes. It appears they feel empowered when the psychopath pays attention to them. And this particular individual even used to say, my children say to me, well, mummy, it's your fault. You're the one, you're the problem. These are the individuals that aid psychopaths. You've seen it in those wonderful horror movies where the gypsies shelter the vampire and where you see that individual that cries out, oh master, master. Well, they're for real. And you will find links below giving you detailed information as to how they work. I found out there are corporations that do the same thing. Governments, politicians, judges, courts, and so on and so forth. On my part, when my friend Mustafa and trainer said to me, Mark, Never allow a coward to get brave. That's very simple. If you ever allow them to get away with what they are doing, they will take it to another person. Another person that may be more vulnerable than you, like a more elderly person, like a person that truly works all their lives on trust. Well, my friend Mustafa Al-Turk, is very wise in these matters and he often gives me counsel on these matters. So I say to you, for those people that stole your houses, those people that repossessed your houses, go after them. Do not allow them to get away. Otherwise, there is a chance they'll repeat it. You owe it as a social duty to stop and correct these people. You can start by launching a complaint with me. You can start by doing some searches for yourself. Since you are a sovereign, there is nothing stopping you from going after those people that have done ill on you. Look out for the cobras amongst these subspecies. They will normally come to you as a friend and then inject their poison and sit back and watch the poison work its way into your body, and then they will strike. Well, I've had so much experience with these people, like with the television stations globally that have done character assassinations on me, newspapers, radio stations, day and night. And so effective are they in doing what they do. They rob you. They rob you of the messages that I'm giving you. Because the last thing that they want you to do is to be able to understand what I have said. Once you have understood it, you become empowered. You really do know that you are that sovereign. One of my most memorable journey and the benefactor to me, my educator and my mentor, David Wayne Miller, 
When I met him, it was the pride and joy of my life. I was like a little boy in the presence of a, shall we say, all-loving father. He was a phenomenal man. So much so, the period that you're living in and the things that I'm talking about is the gifts that he gave me and he's now giving to you. Even in his intelligence, I found there was a serpent. Not just one, but many. One of them was Russell J. Gould. I found the very things that he had done to him grotesque. So much so, I made it my duty to be able to stop and correct these people. Some of the stories are heart-rendering. Like, for example, when he was in hospital in Hawaii, he would turn up and ask the doctors, is he dead yet? Is he dead yet? And because it's a military wing as well, they would tell him to get lost. They would kick him out. He would come back again and say things like, if you want me to come and see you, David, give me $3,000. That's on record. While he was passing away, this particular man pretended to court-martial him. Let me make it very clear. The cunning warrior does not attack the body or the mind. It attacks the heart. And that is why nature made sure that negative things are imprinted, embedded into the very cause of your memory. Because a negative or a toxic person can easily take your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to enjoy every moment of this brand new world that we are in. And it is my job to stop and correct the ills of this world. The people that created the death pledges, what you call mortgages, can all be stopped. Thank you very much for listening to me, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you the best. Bye-bye now.